start with um, the broadcast session, which is starting with Mark from the Premier League. Okay, just bear with me before we do that. Let me cut the fuck it. Ready? Ready to roll. All set? Okay. Uh, Mikhail, nice to see you. Um, first of all, latest team news situation and mainly Ober. What, what's, the, what's the latest on that front? Well, as you all know, he had uh, malaria. Uh, he picked it up when he travelled in international break and he didn't have any symptoms and he started to pick some symptoms a few days later. We didn't really know what it was and then uh, the dog did a great job by uh, making some further investigation and then uh, we found out that he, he picked it. He had some rough days, he was in hospital for two days and now he's at home, he's safe and, uh, and he's in good condition and ready to be back. Do you have any idea roughly how long it will be until he's available for selection again? Let's see how he recovers. Obviously, when you get a disease like this, it can take uh, a bit for the body to feel uh, in good condition to, to the extreme conditions that we put the body through in our sport. But um, he wants to come back very quickly. He's really looking forward to, to be back with the team. So let's wait. Um, looking at last night, just uh, briefly, I think you said it was an important win in a crucial moment in the season, as well as going through to a semi-final. Just how good is it for the atmosphere at the club as much as anything? Yeah, the fact that uh, you reach a semi-final, it's always um, a big boost. Uh, this club has to be fighting for every competition that we are involved in. And, um, and last night's performance uh, was a bit indicated that under pressure the team can perform, that the team has this spirit and this desire to to do well and showed um, a real character as well. And I really liked um, the mindset that the players have. From the whistle here at the Emirates with a disappointing result at the end considering so late, on a set piece the players were convinced that uh, we were going to be through. And, um, and that was really helpful on the preparation to get um, what we what we did yesterday. I was just wondering, how does your progression in the Europa League affect your approach to the rest of the Premier League season, with the Europa League being such a priority, given that you're three games away mm. from a trophy and a place in the Champions League in that competition? How does it have a knock-on effect in the Premier League? It has an effect because he is a real challenge playing Thursdays and Sundays is a real challenge uh, in terms of recovery, in terms of preparation and rotation. It's been through like that all season um, and with all the restrictions, injuries, COVID regulation that we had even more. But now it's about uh, winning football matches. At the end of the season, you know that we want to get a good run if we want to progress in the Premier League. So the priority now is Sunday. Forget about put the semi-finals behind us we have two big games to play now at home and, um, and we have to do the best to win it because um, if we do that the season will start to look a little bit different it's important to keep the premier league form going despite Absolutely. the progression in the europa league i think the better we are in the league and we keep winning the confidence level will be higher the spirit will be better the players individual performance will maintain and that would have a knock-on effect on on the europa league for sure Looking at Fulham, um, I was just wondering, is it tougher sometimes when you play a team who are scrapping for their life in the Premier League, maybe more so than when you play a team who have a bit more quality but, but don't have as much to play for, if you see what I mean? Yes, because obviously they want to maintain um, the club in the Premier League. And uh, in my opinion, they've been really unlucky with some results. I started to watch them a few days back. And uh, I really like the way... Scott says his team up is really brave. Uh, they know what to do really well, and um, and again, I think they had some very unfair results that could have put the team in a different position, and um, and they're gonna come here to do what they always do, and and it will be difficult. Yeah, perhaps results haven't reflected their performances recently after that win against Liverpool. Absolutely, that's uh, how I feel, and small details have gone against them in a lot of games. Some there's been. Some decisions, somebody sometimes the, the box have defined games that probably they should have taken more from them and um, credit to them for what they are doing. And uh, I know that some are saying maybe last night was um, your best performance of the season. Looking at another great performance, the opening weekend against Fulham was right up there, I imagine, as well. Yes, I think that uh, we played really well on the day. We won the game, we kept our clean sheets um, and we were really strong, but uh, it will be a different game. Um, Preparation-wise, we don't have much time to do it uh, this time, but we know them well. So, let's see. Thank you for your time, Mikel. Thanks, Mark. Rob from Arsenal. 
Hi, Mikel. Hi. I just wanted to um, ask you about Alex Lacazette. there. In the first leg against Slavia, he missed a, a really big chance, didn't he? But his response has been there since then. has been four goals, and he's really led from the front, a real leader in the team. What does that say about his character, the way that he's responded to that to that moment? It shows the personality that Laka is, that um, he missed two big chances um, in the home game and uh, and then you have to see a reaction. That reaction could be with some fear, some doubt, or feeling a little bit guilty. And the other one is to to have a strong personality and react and say, OK, now I'm going to put him in the back of the net. And he's done that consecutively in two games, being really, really efficient. And, um, and then his momentum continues, the form that he's in continues and, and is really important for the team. He's a real big game player as well, isn't he? I mean, if you look at this season alone, he's got goals against Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, Leicester, Tottenham, two against West Ham. How important as a manager is it for you when you, you know you have a guy who, who's, who really embraces these big big matches, these big moments? Key, because in, um, in key moments and in big matches, you need players um, and senior players that have this experience to make the difference for you. And um, and he's really for me as well in his style and uh, in his development. Even if he's 30, 29, 30 years old, is in the right path because he's really willing to learn. I think he's doing things in a much better way than before, um, and he really glides the team together. And uh, that's a quality that is not easy for a striker, and he's got it. Um. From one of the senior members of the squad to one of the younger players, Emil Smith Rowe, 20 years old, but another game last night where he was phenomenal. He just he never looks phased by anything, does he? How important is that to his success? That sort of lack of fear on the pitch. When they go, when you are young and you go through new experiences, uh, it's really important that these first experiences are positive because it gives you such a boost and confidence in yourself. And these boys have experienced a huge impact on where they were a year ago and where they are now and the expectations that they are producing. But all that has become a really positive thing. So that is speeds up the process um, of a young talent in the development phase. And um, I think that's really positive for them and really positive for the team and the club. And just finally from me, he, the way that he, the, his coolness in the area for, for Nico Pepe's opening goal last night, that's rare in a 20-year-old, isn't it? It's, especially when it comes sort of moments after he'd had a goal disallowed himself. It's incredible feature to his game. Top players in the final third around the box, they have composure. And that extra second, that extra pass, that extra touch, you are in control. And uh, Emil did it to wait for the right moment on the pass. And Nico did it by not rushing his... his uh, He's finished. He took a touch, he took an extra touch and then he made the right decision. And it's all about that. Having that calmness and composure in the final third is a huge difference. Thanks, Mikael.